been such a long time since I last talked to the camera this way. Wow. I've been quite busy getting my medical registration sorted that I hadn't had time to go out to any concerts or operas and I really really miss it. You know, my life is not complete without concerts and operas. Actually, the last time I went out was when I was in Bayreuth for the festival and that was two months ago. Wow. Anyway, I am back and today I am in Sydney, Australia and in fact, I am getting ready to go out this evening. I'm going out to the Sydney Opera House um, and it's going to be a very special evening for me for two reasons. First is that this is going to be the first time I'll get to see the exterior as well as the interior of the Sydney Opera House. And second is that I am going to see an opera with a very, very interesting story. It's a chamber opera by Sir William Kentridge called Waiting for the Sibyl. So in this video, I'll take you with me to the Sydney Opera House. Uh, I'll film the journey there. I think I'm going to take a bus or a train or something. I don't know. I'm new to this city as well, but we'll get there. And I'll film the outside of the opera house as well as the inside where I sit, the stage. I'm not going to film the um, performance, of course. And then we'll come back here and we'll talk about the opera um, afterwards. So I'm going to go get ready and I'll see you back here after the opera. Now let's get to know the opera I'm seeing tonight for a bit. It might not be as well known as those operas by Verdi or Puccini or Wagner, but I was hooked the first time I heard Sir Kentridge talk about it. Waiting for the Sibyl tells the story of the Cumian prophetess Sibyl, as told in Virgil's The Aeneid. The story goes that people who would like to know their fate would come and ask Sibyl what their future holds, and she would write the answer on an oak leaf and put those oak leaves in front of her cave. However, your prophecy may be mixed with other people's when the wind blows and the leaves are scattered and in the end, you don't really know if you've picked up yours or other people's prophecy. Change the circular key, horse in the ferry, send views of a very big boat. Now that was the first time I caught sight of the Sydney Opera House. I think I'm gonna get hit by a bird one day <laughs> if I keep walking and filming. Right, okay, I have half an hour before the curtain rises, so I'm gonna go in now. You can have a drink and a conversation overlooking the Sydney Harbour, so it'd be a good idea to go with someone. But one thing I love about Australians is that they always seem to have a smile on their face. So even though I went there alone, the vibe was really amazing. And now it's time to go inside. Now this is the Joan Sutherland Theatre, which is named after the great Australian soprano Dame Joan Sutherland. This is the second largest hall in the Sydney Opera House. The largest is of course the main concert hall. I'm not going there tonight, but we'll be attending a piano concert tomorrow evening. That was a triumph. Really, really well done. And that's the pianist that just jumped onto the stage. Um, the first part of the opera was a short film accompanied by a live piano score, putting forward the ideas that will reappear in the main part of the opera. And as you can see, I was really, really happy that night. I am back from the opera and it exceeded all my expectations. I loved it. I really do. 
Anyway, this part is just me rambling on and on about the opera. I usually do this in my head um, when I get on a train on my way back home, or when I get home, I usually upload a photo on Instagram and I put all this um, in a caption for my friends to read. If they do, I think they don't. It's like really, usually, really, really long. <laughs> anyway, I thought. You know, I have a YouTube channel. I might as well do it here. If not for you guys, then maybe in two years I'll come back and watch this, see what I thought about each opera. So yeah, disclaimer: I might not be making much sense because usually after um, a concert or an opera, I would be in a half conscious very dazed state of mind for some reason and the thoughts are just pouring out of my head as i speak so yeah bear with me well first of all i just loved the indigenous music in this opera and sir kentridge is an african artist so of course he has insight into this and i think you know this is one of the examples of how music can draw us into the story you know it's a medium for us to understand what the opera is trying to say and the music actually made me feel like I was one of the people that was asking Sybil um, about my fate you know what is going to happen to me next year will I get to change many lives as a doctor is my work going to have an impact will I ever get married will I get to see the northern lights in this lifetime just amazing Oh, and the backdrop, <sighs> my goodness, there was this animation of a book displaying so many prophecies and the dance coupled with that backdrop just worked perfectly for this opera. Because the central theme of this opera is prophecies, horoscope, right? And it's a great theme. Um, there is something about horoscope that keeps people intrigued and the backdrop of the opera was displaying so many prophecies second by second and so almost the whole time i was sitting there i was concentrating on reading those prophecies and interpreting those in the context of my own life so if you've been to a psychic before it's exactly like that you know the prophecies are vague like be careful of the street at night some doesn't even make sense, like the radio is faithful to the megahertz, something like that. Um, I don't know what it means. And some a generalization, like there will be one happy man in the northeast of Brazil, for example. Of course there will be, you know. And some is up to your interpretation, like start dying. Um, the moment has gone. That might not make sense per se, but if you have something in mind you're hoping to relate the prophecy to, then it will make sense. If you're thinking about um, one specific moment in your life, something you'd like to do but you haven't done, and you see you know, the moment has gone, then it makes sense. Anyway, I digress. Um, I think the story of Sybil made me ponder the age-old question of free will versus determination all over again. I actually hadn't thought about this question for quite a while now, but um, it's actually one of my most favorite questions, bar none. Uh, to be honest, I've always been on the side of determination. I believe that a huge percentage of what is going to happen to me are already predetermined and you know zooming in it may seem like your action matters for example you may think oh if i do this presentation really well i'll get the job promotion but zooming out you've already been conditioned to think this way or act this way and so i think most of my actions are a result of things that have happened to me people I've encountered and the experiences I've gained thus far. And I have a reason 
to believe that the opera agrees with me. So without spoiling or going too much details, there is this one scene where a guy was trying to change his fate only to end up succumbing to his predetermined fate. So I think, yes, there is a small degree of personal agency, but at the end of the day, I think things are already predetermined. At least that's what I believe at this point in my life. And the metaphor that the leaves get scattered in front of Sibyl's cave, so you might pick up other people's prophecy instead of your own, is just so true in real life as well. Because if it happens that way, it means even though you think you know where your life is headed, you don't really know. You're always clouded to a certain degree and you can't be sure. Imagine if you picked up a leaf and it says, you are going to get married next year. Oh wow, that's nice, right? That's the way you hope it would be. But if you think about it, deep down, there is still a degree of uncertainty. Um, you can't know for sure if that prophecy is meant for you. Something else could happen in the meantime. You could get hit by a bus. Oh my gosh, why am I <laughs> so dark here? Um, your fiance could move 8,000 miles away and call off the wedding. In the end though, it could be that the prophecy you're holding in your hand is not meant for you. It's not yours, after all, it's meant for another person. And by the same token, your prophecy is known to another person, but it's meant for you. So in the end, it might seem like you know where you're headed in life, but you don't really know, not until it actually happens. Which got me asking myself, would I like to know my fate? Would you? You know, two years ago, I may have said, yes, I want to know my fate. I want to know exactly how and when I am going to die. Because that way I would be able to plan my days better. You know, if I were going to die in six months, I wouldn't be doing a job that I don't enjoy in order to save up for pension, for example. Because I wouldn't be around long enough to enjoy that. So might as well just go out there and travel the world right now. You know, but today, I think I'll say no, I don't want to know my fate. And I don't have a grand reason for it either. I just think that life itself would lose all its glimmer of hope if I were to know everything going in. Like imagine I would be going to this event knowing beforehand that I'll meet the person I thought would be the love of my life and that in five years I'll break up with him. In that case, I wouldn't be so excited, you know? Because why would I be excited? Because I knew going in that I would break up with him in five years. So isn't it better that I go to this event and thought that, oh, I might have met the one for me? and be happy in fool's paradise. I just think life is just more colorful this way. I think it's for the best that it's windy in front of Sibyl's cave, because this way all of us go through life half blinded, but still full of hope. Anyway, the opera asks one last question, where to put all this hope? And I think that's up to you to answer. So that's it from me tonight then guys, I will see you in my next video.